Hi, I'm Kelly Bonifer, the Adair County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. And I'm Pam York, and I'm the Russell County Family Consumer Science Agent. And today we're going to be looking at some more Kentucky Proud Plated Up recipes. We're going to take a look at kushaw pie, and we're going to be talking about winter squash. We have uh, pumpkin kushaw and butternut squash uh, on display uh, with us today. And uh, there's acorn squash, there's just all kinds of different squash. And uh, they're very high in vitamin A, and um, they're very good for us. Uh, they can be used for making pies and um, casseroles and a lot of good uh, fall dishes. Cool, I didn't know. Now some of these squashes I know we can cook with, but then there are some that I wasn't sure. I just thought they were for yard decorations and things for your harvest yeah. outside. And, <laughs> and there's probably other people that feel that way too, Kelly. Right. But um, the pie that we're going to uh, be making today is the kushaw pie. And oh. it's good. And the kushaw is the striped. Um, in fact, if you want to grab that kushaw, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Okay. Um, this, these are all considered uh, winter squash, and um, the it's, the pie tastes similar to uh, like a pumpkin pie, oh. except mm. uh, of course it's a milder flavor oh, okay. than the pumpkin. So um, it's very very good, and of course we'll be trying some a little bit like in selecting uh, the winter squash, um, and we're talking today in particular about the kushaws. Uh, they should be um, hard, uh, very firm and hard and free of blemishes. And uh, you can actually store these uh, for a month or so after oh, wow. you um, either harvest them or in some cases you're going to probably buy them at your local farmer's mm -hmm. market um, or a produce place. So you can store them and keep them for a while in a cool, dry uh, place. Okay. So you can actually uh, um, keep them for a little bit. So um, the nutrition um, information on the kushaws and the winter squash, they're very high in vitamin A and fiber. Oh. So that's a good point because mm -hmm. we uh, all need to get more fiber in our diets. So what we're going to do is just um, cut this uh, since um, we want uh, everybody to know that you can actually make something mm -hmm. out of this. So uh, I'm just going to take and cut off um, and, and do keep in mind that this is not an easy task. Um, this is uh, pretty hard to do, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to have a really sharp knife, and of course, um, you have to be really, really careful because you do not want to cut yourself or cut mm -hmm. your countertop. That's true. And you will see. Uh, in the center, it has all of the seeds. Okay. And you're going to take those out. And a good way to do that is just to use a spoon, a tablespoon or a heavy mm -hmm. uh, spoon. And you may actually uh, even have to reach in there and grab them out with your hands. Oh, okay. After you loosen it up because it is attached very, very much so. So, are you impressed yet with the Kushaw Kelly? Well, that's neat. It's neat. I didn't know you could do that. So you can. Uh, you're, I hope by the time we taste of that. Pie, I bet you could put soup in there. You can use actually, it as a soup tureen. You can actually use uh, pumpkins mm -hmm. and Kushaws both mm -hmm. um, for a. If you wanted to use this that as a decorative, really like a mm -hmm. centerpiece, true, uh, in a, on a table to to serve soup in. And, uh, that I've would actually, be pretty. Yeah, I've actually seen that. Uh, and I've actually done that before mm. with the pumpkin. Haven't done it with a kushaw. Now, do you roast the, the seeds of a kushaw like can. you do a pumpkin? You very much can. And okay. those are good. That's a good point to bring out because, uh, of course, those are going to be rich in your um, uh, fiber and your uh, vitamin A okay. as well. But we have it pretty well cleaned out. So I'm going to let you take this, okay. Kelly. The, oh, and do okay. something with that and bring that back. Now that the seeds in the middle is all cleaned out, um, we're going to take and peel it. And uh, this is a little bit tricky, of course, for the first time that you peel a um, kushal. And you're just going to take a knife, and it does need to be pretty sharp. And this is very, um, very uh, 
hard to do. So it does take a little bit of work. And I'm going to cut this in half so that I'll actually have smaller piece, smaller piece to work with. I think it might work, work better. So um, we're just going to take and, and get the peeling off. And um, yesterday we used the vegetable peeler mm -hmm. on this as well. So if you want okay. to, I don't have it um, over here right now, but you can actually use the vegetable peeler, you know, just okay. like you're peeling carrots. Okay. And that'll, that will take the peeling off as well. So that'd be easier. Yeah, I think it Faster. would be. I think it really might be easier. But you just work uh, like so and get the peeling off. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to cut the uh, one inch pieces. So by the time you have your kushal um, prepared, you're probably going to be worn out. But <laughs> but you will have enough for two pies with one kushal. And so I have one piece with the peeling off. So I'm going to use the knife. And you might want to take um, and get the little middle part out a little bit more. And then I'm going to cut it in, in the middle and cut it in like one inch pieces. And this is going to make the filling for the kushal pie. Oh, okay. So you can see the small pieces. So what you do from here is um, you have all of the pieces cut mm -hmm. up and then put it into um, boiling water, but not very much water, just a very small amount. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can actually steam the kushal. Okay. And it will, when it's um, tender, it'll just start kind of mashing up. So uh, we have some um, kushal already um, prepared. Okay. So we can put um, all of this over there. We have two cups of cooked kushal in uh, the bowl. And after you cook it or uh, steam it, if you prefer to do that, then you need to uh, make sure that all of the moisture in the water is drained off really good. Otherwise, the filling for the pie uh, may be a little bit too, um, the consistency might be too runny or not firm enough. So make sure the water is drained off really well of the kushal. And then um, you just uh, mash the kushal. And you can also put it in the blender if you want it to be really, really, um, uh, really smooth consistency, you can do that, but you do not have to. You can just mash it with the, like a potato masher or this uh, neat little kitchen gadget. So you can do it either way. And it, you can see how easy mm -hmm. it's, it's mashing up really, really um, good. So um, we're going to take um, and mix um, half a cup of brown sugar and uh, two eggs and a, half a, a fourth a cup of white sugar. And then we have uh, cinnamon mm -hmm. and nutmeg and we have vanilla and lemon extract. Yum. So that makes up the ingredients for the kushal pie. So um, to break the eggs, um, using a bread knife and I have a, a bowl that I'm just going to put the egg into one at a time and that way um, you make sure that that they're good and I'll put this one in here that way whenever you're preparing a recipe then if you have one egg that could be actually bad and one good, then you don't ruin the good one, or that's why you uh, 
it's better to put them in a bowl instead of putting mm -hmm. them directly into the kushal because you saw how much work it was mm -hmm. to get this kushal to this stage. Yes. So we, <laughs> we don't want to uh, put anything in there that is not belong. So I'm going to just um, mix the two eggs with a small whisk. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, some margarine um, that we need to add as well. No. Oh. So um, it takes a fourth a cup. You and I think we're using butter. Yes. Actually today, so a fourth a cup of butter, and we're just going to add. The, here's the fourth a cup of um, butter, and of course it's not um, real, real hot because mm -hmm. if, it, if it was really hot, it could cook the eggs. And we don't want that. And we don't want that. And then the white sugar, and we have the brown sugar, and this is the real dark, the dark brown sugar. Oh, See nice. the difference? Yes. You just get, it's, it's going to difference. make a, um, the pie filling will be darker. Okay. Uh, brown. And, um, this recipe is really easy, and it, it's just really common ingredients. That was the cinnamon and the nutmeg, and uh, I'm going to wait until I stir this okay. up real good before I put um, before I put the uh, extract Extracts. in there. But um, you just simply mix all of your ingredients together, except for the extracts, and we'll put those in here in a moment. You can see that dark brown mm -hmm. sugar is making a, a richer color filling. And yes. you can use either kind of mm -hmm. brown sugar. Looks good. You can use the light or the dark, whichever one you have in your pantry. Mm -hmm. But it looks pretty, um, looks pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. It does. And then we're going, after we add the extracts to this, uh, we're going to um, put it into a graham cracker crust. Okay. And the one that we're showing is a prepared graham cracker mm. crust uh, that we're mm -hmm. going to pour this into. And the one that pie that we actually mm -hmm. had made was a pie crust made. Um, you may have a favorite pie uh, plate or mm -hmm. something special that you want to right. use. So you might want to make your own graham cracker crust mm -hmm. by using the graham cracker crumbs and sugar and um, and butter, mm -hmm. and that's you can do it either way. So this filling is ready. To put into the graham cracker crust. And this, um, you bake this at 400 degrees. That filled that all the way up. 400 degrees, and you put it in a preheated oven at 400 degrees, and um, bake it for 15 to 20 minutes. And you'll just have to uh, check it and make sure that the center is done before you take it out. So whipped cream? Whipped cream. You can use this to decorate it or and of course it tastes good too. Or make your own? Yes. We have a finished um, Kushaw pie and we actually made this in our own pie plate. Um, so we used um, two cups of graham cracker crumbs and um, I think six tablespoons of butter mm -hmm. and about two or three tablespoons of sugar. And that's all that's mm -hmm. in the, the crust. And this will be really pretty on a, on a holiday table. Yes. And the, the upcoming orange, holidays. Mm -hmm. um, for the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving yes. and the fall. Mm -hmm. And let's see, we probably need a, you want to cut us a couple of pieces? Sure. It's too pretty to cut. <laughs> And I noticed when you were cooking, when you were mashing up the, the kushaw, 
it looked like applesauce. It had a consistency of applesauce. And that's a very good uh, point because it it does look a little bit like applesauce. Of course, the first piece is always the hardest to get out when you mm -hmm. cut a pie. Yes. So once you get the first piece out, it will be much easier to do. Okay. It's not wanting to cooperate. It's okay. It'll still taste good. Oh, yeah. And we can put some more um, whip whipping cream on there. Too, oh, of course. You yes. You can never go wrong with whipped cream. And so that second piece came, came out, out just, just fine. fine. So you'd have eight to ten servings of pie with the kushal pie, and um, depending on the size of the pieces you mm -hmm. cut. Do you want some whipped cream? Oh, I think that would be so great. So we can try this? How did you end up with the small piece? <laughs> maybe I you, cut it you that need, way. <laughs> maybe you need, you need the larger piece. <laughs> oh, I'm making a mess. Yeah, it is, it is a little messy. There we go. Okay. I guess we need to try the kushaw pie. Yes. Get some more cream in there. I think you'll be surprised. Mm hmm. Mmm. You can really taste the cinnamon. It's really good. And of course, in this recipe, you mm -hmm. can actually put more cinnamon or mm -hmm. less cinnamon, depending on how much cinnamon you want. That's or you, really good. You could actually use the allspice mm -hmm. if you'd rather use an allspice that has cloves and nutmeg and the other oh, okay. spices of the fall and Thanksgiving holidays. That's really good. It is good.